أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بذ بركة سيد الشيخ سيد محمد فوزي الكركري قدس الله وسره Notes from Mudakara of October 14, 2023 Before starting this video, I would like to state that this folk would never have seen the light without Sidi Shaykh. If something is wrong, it will be from myself, and everything that is correct is from Sidi Shaykh. The disciple stated that the role of the intermediary, al wasita is apparent in multiple aspects of life, such as a mother's role in giving birth to a child, or an employer, paying an employee's salary. However, when it comes to supplication, dua, he questioned the role of the intermediary and how one can ask Allah through an intermediary without causing confusion or ambiguity. Sidi Shaykh responded by saying that supplication is made directly to Allah. There is no intermediary when it comes to supplication. But when one is supplicating to Allah, and he gets negative thoughts or feels that he is not present with Allah, then he requests Allah say, by the blessing of so and so, bi barakat fulan. Sidi Shaykh then referred to a part in the hadith of Al Wali where Allah says, My servant continues to draw nearer to me with super irrigatory prayers, nawafal, so that I shall love him. When I love him, I shall be his hearing with which he shall hear, etc. until he says at the end, and if he asks something of me, I shall surely give it to him. From this hadith Qudsi, we can understand why one may supplicate to Allah and not receive a response. If one is present with Allah and has a spiritual attraction, jadab, to Allah, he supplicates him and asks for whatever he needs. On the other hand, one can supplicate to Allah by the blessings of his beloved ones, which are the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam and his descendants. So the supplication is unique to Allah, but the intermediary is needed to take the means to Allah. Sidi Shaykh added that one does not need an intermediary once he has been annihilated in Allah's presence. When he reaches the pinnacle of nearness to Allah, he can assert that he does not need a mediator. The mediator's role is to teach people how their hearing becomes Allah's hearing, their sight becomes Allah's sight, and so on. He guides them through the necessary steps so their supplications become instantly accepted. Since the intermediary, al wasita perfects and masters this, it's allowed to enter through his gate and supplicate Allah by his virtue, by saying, Bijjahi fulan. This has nothing to do with associating partners, shirk. Instead, it teaches how to humble oneself and elevate others, and whoever humbles himself is elevated by God. The Prophet ﷺ said, The master of people is their servant. So if one considers himself a servant and considers others as masters, he will end up being their master. If one considers the intermediary al wasita purer, holier, and closer to Allah than him, and supplicates Allah through his virtue, Allah accepts his supplication and fulfills all his needs. Allah may elevate his virtue, jah, even higher than that of the intermediary. Sidi Shaykh concluded this part by saying that Allah is near to his servant. However, one sees himself as far from his Lord. So he asks and supplicates Allah through the virtue of the one whom he believes is near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another question, a disciple had a dream in which he was carrying a box with Sidi Shaykh and crossing through a series of doors. Each door they passed through was tighter and more narrow than the previous. After passing through the second door, the disciple asked Sidi Shaykh if he could carry the box by himself. When he attempted to do so, he realized that he was not able to carry it on his own. Sidi Shaykh carried then the box with him and passed through the third gate which was too narrow to allow them to pass together. After passing through, they saw many old ruined houses. Then they heard the call to prayer, and Sidi Shaykh told the disciple that it was time to pray. Sidi Shaykh explained how in wayfaring the Shaykh carries with the disciple the weight of the knowledge of secrets. 
The disciple realizes this when he is in the first and second circuit. Yet, when it comes to the third circuit, he wants to carry everything by himself and believes that he has become a shaykh. But when the reality is revealed to him, he realizes its difficulty and its heaviness and returns to the shaykh to help in carrying. See, the shaykh added that the more the disciple advances in the path, the more the dot becomes narrower. At first, the hair appears as a nuranic overflow, faida nuraniya. But in the second lecture, it's the center of the faida. In the third lecture, it's the center of the center. In the fourth, it's the center of the center of the center, and so on. This is clear in verse 40 of Surah Al-A'raf, where Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, nor shall they enter the garden till the camel pass through the eye of the needle. It's important to mention that in the translation of the verse, the word Jamal is translated to camel. However, the meaning of the word Jamal in the verse referred to the thick rope used to attach the boat's anchor. Sidi Shaykh explained how entering the thick rope in the eye of the needle is something beyond the intellect. When the disciple advances in the path, he feels that the narrowness increases every time. When he passes, he feels construction, and after he passes through, he feels expansion. The further he advances, the more he understands that the world is not worth to Allah the wing of a mosquito. The house are ruins, and everything is disappearing until he realizes an elation in Allah. Then his heart becomes empty from the physical world. Sidi Shaykh said that this aspect becomes clearer in the third lecture. Sidi Shaykh added that in the lecture of the Lamb of Contraction, the disciple reads the Lamb with the Lamb. Then he reads the Lamb with the hair. This is where he finds expansion, Ikisa. As for the Lamb, there is no expansion. In the second Lamb, the Lamb of Gnosis, Lamb al Ma'rifa, it becomes narrower. And as he advances, it gets narrower and narrower until he reaches a stage where there is nothing but emptiness. At this point, the disciple should define the center himself from what he learned before. So that was all for this video. Alhamdulillah, الذي أدانا لهذا وما كنا لنتدي لولا أن هدانا الله. لقد جاءت رسول ربنا بالحق. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم لك الحمد. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم. في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين